Hi, Els here, and this is the last video in the long-term construction project with expected losses. I'm going to do the calculation, the entries, and the financial statements for 2017. We'll be using the same chart process that we did in 2015 and 2016. In addition, I'll solve the problem using method 1 and 2 for the cumulative losses. Let's get started. Note that in my last two videos, I pointed out using a speech bubble that I had made a mistake in 2017 for the total billings to date and the total cash collected to date. I have now corrected that so you can see here that the numbers are now correct, a total of $80 for both categories. The download below this video is also corrected. My apologies for any confusion this may have caused. Okay, remember that we would only do the chart at the end of the year after we have made the other three entries. As in 2016, let's do all three entries first because they are made continually throughout the year. First, record the costs incurred on the project. Again, we have to calculate the current year's cost to make this entry. 2017 costs are $81. 2016 year to date are $63. Subtract them to get the cost for only 2017, $18. Let's do the entry. Again, I already have the accounts listed down. First, there's a debit to CIP for $18. Then a credit to materials, cash accounts, payable, etc. $18. Record them in the T accounts. Debit CIP, $18. The credit to the other accounts, we're going to ignore. Next, we bill our client and have to record the billings. Again, we have a total billings to date of $80. Subtract the total billings from 2016 year to date, $58. That gets us. $22. Let's make the entry. Debit accounts receivable, $22. Credit billings on CIP, $22. Record this in the T accounts. Debit accounts receivable, $22. Credit billings on CIP, $22. Notice that the total in the billings on CIP is now $80. This makes sense as it's the end of the contract and we would have billed the client for 100% of the selling price of the contract. Now we have to figure out the cash paid in 2017. We have a year-to-date total, $80. Year-to-date for 2016, $54. The difference, $26. Let's make the entry. Debit cash, $26. Credit accounts receivable, $26. Update to T accounts. Debit cash, we're not recording. Credit to accounts receivable, $26. Let's do a total. The total in accounts receivable account is now zero. This makes sense as it's the end of the contract and the client has paid us the full $80 selling price. Now that we have recorded these entries, we're standing at the end of 2017. We can now complete our chart. For 2017, we're going to use method one first and then move on to method two. For method one, we make an adjustment to the current year's cost of goods sold, also called cost of sales or construction expenses. Let's do the chart. We see that the cost to date are $81. Remember that we have to use the cost to date. Don't be tempted to use only the current year's cost because your calculations will not work. Notice that this $81 is less than what we expected in 2015, when we were expecting $84 to complete the project. This is because the costs are a moving target, and there are many variables that can cause them to either increase or decrease. Here we managed to complete the contract for less than we thought we were going to do in 2016, a total of $81. Estimated costs to complete are zero. This is because the contract is finished. Total costs, $81. The next step is always the same. Compare the total estimated cost to the selling price on the contract. Total costs are $81 and the selling price is $80. This means that on this construction contract, we have lost a total of $1. Let's finish the chart. Percentage complete, cost to date, divided by estimated cost to complete, 100%. Revenue to date, that's the percentage times the selling price, $80. Prior year's revenues. We have to subtract that so we can calculate the current year's revenues. Prior year's revenues are $60. Current year's revenue, $20. Current year's costs. Remember, we calculated those as $18. Gross profit or loss, 
a gross profit of $2. Now we just finished the chart and we see that we have a profit of $2. Even though we now have a profit, because we adjusted the numbers in the past and because we still have a loss position of $1, we have to continue to check the adjustment every single year. Therefore, we have to use the step-by-step -step process to calculate the cumulative loss. We already have some of the numbers here. 2015, we had a gross profit of $2.80. In 2016, we had an updated gross loss of $6.80. Notice that we have to use the updated numbers when calculating the cumulative profit or loss. Now let's add 2017. Gross profit of $2. The cumulative loss we have to calculate. $2. Let's compare that to the required loss on the whole contract. The contract price, $80, less the total cost to date, $81. The required loss, $1. Finally, calculate the adjustment necessary. We have a $2 loss on the contract as it stands. We need a $1 loss. Therefore, we have to increase the gross profit in 2017 by $1. We need an additional profit of $1 to ensure we have the correct cumulative loss of $1. Using method one will reduce our current year's costs so that the gross profit increases and we get a cumulative loss of $1. Using method one, we're going to decrease our current year's costs by $1. Note that there is no change to the revenue. Now let's calculate our adjusted gross profit, $3. Let's see if this works by running it through our cumulative calculations. Update 2017 gross profit to the new $3. Calculate the cumulative loss, and it's $1. That's just what we need. Now we can do the last entries using method one. Our adjustment to record costs and revenue would be as follows. Debit cost of goods sold, also called cost of sales or construction expenses, $17. Credit revenues, $20. The difference, debit CIP for $3. Let's update the T accounts. The debit to cost of goods sold and the credit to revenue we're going to ignore, but we've got a debit to CIP for $3. What's the current total in CIP? $80. The selling price of the contract. What is the last entry in 2017 now that the project is finished? We have to remove the CIP and the billings on CIP to make them zero. Notice from our T accounts that CIP is equal to $80 and the billings on CIP is equal to $80 also. If we debit one and credit the other, their ending balances will be zero. Let's do the entry. Debit billings on CIP, $80. Credit CIP, $80. Let's float through the T accounts. Debit billings on CIP, $80. Balance, zero. Credit CIP, $80. Balance, zero. All the accounts we've been tracking for the last three years are now set at zero, which makes sense considering the project is finished. Let's look at the balance sheet, also called the Statement of Financial Position, and the Income Statement at the end of 2017. I'm going to look at the cumulative cash, $80. Cumulative AR, zero. CIP, zero. Billings on CIP, zero. Revenues in excess of billings, zero. Total on the balance sheet, $80, which is equal to our cumulative revenues. Note that in reality, these three zero accounts would be omitted from the financial statements. I'm just showing them here to clarify what has happened on this project. Let's do the income statement. Revenue from long-term contracts, $20. Cost of goods sold, $17. Gross profit, $3. So at the end of 2017, the cumulative loss on the project is $1, but it is recognized over three years. Let's see how this would work under method two. Remember that for method two, we don't adjust the cost of goods sold. Instead, we use a separate account to record the adjustment. The situation here has not changed. You can see that we already have recorded 2015, 2016, and 2017 before the adjustment. Remember, because we haven't made one yet, we're using method two to do the adjustment. So we've got a 2017 gross profit of $2. Our cumulative loss to date is $2. What's the required? 
$80 selling price minus cost state of $81 is equal to a loss of $1. What's the required adjustment? We have to make a positive adjustment, meaning a credit, to reduce the loss down to $1. Under method two, we make an adjustment to the loss account, but actually, this time we're going to recover. Let's do the chart. Here in 2017, we have our gross profit of $2. Now let's do the adjustment. Expected loss recovery on construction contract, $1. Adjusted gross profit or loss, $3. Let's do the entries. Notice the first three entries are still the same. At the end of 2017, we have to do three entries under this method, but first we're going to recognize the current year's gross profit. Debit cost of goods sold, $18. Credit revenue on long-term contracts, $20. And then a debit to CIP for the difference, $2. The next entry is to recognize the adjustment. Debit CIP for the adjustment, $1. Credit expected loss recovery on construction contract, $1. Finally, we need to zero out the CIP and the billings on CIP. Let's just do the T account for a second for these two entries so we can see that the CIP and the billings on CIP is $80. Remember we debited cost of goods sold $18 and we credited revenues on long-term contracts from $20, but we're not gonna use those T accounts. We're just gonna do the debit to CIP for $2. Then we're going to enter the adjustment on CIP, which was a debit on CIP for $1. Total CIP, $80. Billings on CIP, $80. Let's clear these out. Debit billings on CIP, $80. Credit CIP, $80. Let's flow it through the T accounts. Credit CIP, $80. Total at the end of the year, zero. Debit billings on CIP, $80. Total at the end of the year, zero. Similar to method one, when we use method two, you can see that all the accounts we've been tracking for the last three years are now set at zero. It totally makes sense because the project is finished. Let's look at the balance sheet and the income statement for 2017 using method two. Total cash collected on all three years, $80. Accounts receivable, zero. CIP, zero. Billings on CIP, zero. Revenues in excess of billings, zero. Total current assets on this project, $80. Again, $80 is equal to the total amount that we charged our client. Remember that under normal circumstances, we would not include zero balances on our financial statements. Let's do the income statement. Revenue from long-term contracts, $20. Cost of goods sold, $18. Expected loss recovery on construction contract, $1. Make sure you understand that the cost of goods sold in this case is negative, but the expected loss recovery is positive. And therefore the gross profit in 2017, $3. Under method two, as with method one, at the end of 2017, the cumulative loss on the project is $1, recognized over three years. Thank you for sticking with me for the last three videos covering construction contracts with expected losses. If you have any questions or comments, or you'd like to see more videos covering specific concepts or topics, please post something in the comments section and I'll see what I can do. Thank you again for watching my videos.